You'll notice then that Twitter has already changed. Things are happening, and Elon Musk hasn't even actually taken over the company yet. The, the purchase isn't even finalized as of yet, but things are already different. And one of the things that I've seen people doing is posting things that would previously have got you banned. Things like talking about what the anti-vaxxers were talking about, saying, oh, maybe there are things about the vaccine that are perfect. Things we can't even really say on YouTube, in fact. Am I allowed to say that? I don't know. I right. think no. Okay. Fine. I'll, I'll censor it. <laughs> okay, great. Well, <laughs> stuff that we can't put on YouTube, we had to put on loadseas.com, and of course talking about the horse paste narrative, uh, because you couldn't talk about the horse paste either on Twitter and probably not on YouTube. And so if you'd like to know the sorts of things you weren't allowed to say on those platforms, well, feel free to come and support us by signing up on the website. But the, this is the point. You are going at some point to be able to talk about these forbidden yet true subjects that are not like bigoted or anything like that on Twitter itself. And you can see how all of this came about, and you can see that Elon Musk is in touch with what the problem was. He posted this, the extreme antibody reaction from those who fear free speech says it all. Yes, it does. There are certain hegemonic narratives that are being upheld by people on Twitter, which filter through the various politicians, institutions, and essentially embed themselves over our reality, that mean that if people are allowed to speak truthfully, well, what happens? They won't prioritize those weird fringe narratives about Precisely. intersectionalism because that's not what people actually want. It's not just intersectionalism. It's about vaccines. It's about you know any of these any of these sorts of uh, any taboo left wing God. Yeah, exactly. But it's not even just necessarily left wing. It's about the the managerialness of the whole thing. The the allowance of experts to take over civilization. That's what was being facilitated by Twitter. And Elon Musk, is, with his free speech, uh, is going to upend this apple cart and actually allow us to live in peace. And so he posts a follow-up to this, which is, I think is a, a useful thing to understand, his view on what free speech is. He says, by free speech, I simply mean that which matches the law. And of course, in America, they have the First Amendment, which means practically anything uh, goes, which is good which is what we should have in Britain, Boris. Uh, I'm against censorship if that goes far beyond the law. If people want less free speech, they will ask government to pass laws to that effect. Therefore, going beyond the law is contrary to the will of the people. Now, that's fine. That's a perfectly reasonable syllogism. That makes perfect sense and seems very, very, well, like I said, reasonable, frankly. This is also insurance, because at the same time, he was being warned by the EU, mm -hmm. and particularly Germany. Yep. But we have laws that criminalise quite a lot of things. Yes, and which so is why people constantly get messages, you've been criminalised in Germany for something you tweeted, and an American's just like, ha ha ha, I don't care. Yeah, and the same with Pakistan and so forth, yeah. is that he'll be able to do as he wishes in the United States, but everywhere else in the world, because it's not a free planet, uh, no. No, and he is basically signalling to those governments, I will abide by the law as well. Oh yeah, absolutely. And he's right to do so, because otherwise... There's nothing else you can do. Exactly. What, what are his choices here? But uh, anyway, there are also rumours that he is going to be moving the headquarters of Twitter to Miami. Now, this is not in any way confirmed, but man, this would be a really good idea. I mean, we were joking about him saying to Ron DeSantis, hey, how about I buy some swamp land and I'll develop it. <laughs> and in return, an special economic zone where I have my own laws. <laughs> yeah, can I be a little self-governing enclave? I mean, I hear you've done something similar in Florida recently. Elon Musk land. Yeah, uh, where, yeah, exactly. A global Twitter HQ in Miami would be amazing. Uh, you can imagine just how different the tone of Twitter would end up becoming if the people running it were not social justice warriors from California. Anyway, so uh, the response to this was hilarious. I mean, you get people like Sean King who deleted their account and then came back and claimed they didn't delete their account because, of course, that was them taking a massive public L. And, I mean, Sean, we all saw you delete your account. Like Everyone could see it. Uh, but it doesn't matter. It's uh, clear as day and as white as white. <laughs> Moving on, uh, the, Sean decided to continue owning himself by posting stuff like this. Ask any conservative this question and watch them struggle to answer it. You ready for a struggle, Callum? I don't think I'll manage. Since you say free speech and all speech needs to be allowed on Twitter, does that mean you believe that should include targeted hate speech against Jews? Should that be allowed? Be specific and clear. What kind of replies do you think he got to this? Yes. <laughs> 2,500 quote tweets of people saying, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Hate speech isn't real. Go to yeah. hell. Which is exactly what uh, Quarter Black Garrett 
output, actually. Hate speech doesn't exist, so the very premise of your question is nonsense. Also, I don't care. People insult me for being a white man, well, when, when I was on Twitter, for being on Twitter all day. If you're going to insult, insult people for the, these characteristics, well, equality, <laughs> frankly. Targeted hate speech against whites is not only the norm, it's also, well, legal Preferred. In, in law for hiring practices <laughs> in the yeah. West. So, yeah. Hmm. So anyway, let's uh, let's go over to Twitter HQ. How do you think they're taking the news? It's not well. So uh, this this is an interesting uh, post. Elon Musk has now publicly agreed with amplif with and amplified criticisms from the right of two individual Twitter employees today. Well, I hope they're enjoying the idea of moving to Florida. One accusing its top executive uh, policy executive of censorship. What Parag Agrawal? Yeah, yeah. He was pro censorship. Yeah. And the other accusing the company she. lawyer of facilitating fraud. Hmm? She. Uh, oh, sorry, Parag, sorry. Yeah, the, the lawyer is she. Sorry. And we'll get to her in a minute. Uh, and that's interesting how uh, she's being accused of facilitating fraud. Hmm. Very interesting. But I, I like the follow-up to this tweet. Imagine getting up and going to work in the morning for a company whose new owner is systematically attacking your colleagues for his 84 million followers in public on the site you work for and knowing you might be next. This is the worst case scenario Twitter employees feared. <laughs> Good. I, I'm, a, I'm a, well, old Google on this one. Just don't uh -huh. be evil. Well, yeah, but they, they don't know how to not be evil. I know, but it's just, like, if you scroll back up, I mean, the two examples there that are given, yeah. it's just one where someone is just a censorious yeah. piece of ass and then... The other person who has yeah. apparently committed fraud. Just don't do that. Yeah. But the, the Twitter employees, it's, it's literally like the orcs of Mordor being like, oh my God, Gandalf just took over the Dark Tower. Are we in trouble? Yeah, you're in trouble. And you deserve to be in trouble. And Stop you know, being evil. But you also know you deserve to be in trouble. Exactly. I mean, that's, that's why you're afraid. That's the revealing thing about all of this. Is, as Elon says, the antibody reaction to, we should have free speech. And they all know they're in trouble because they're like, oh crap. But what about my lies? I've, I've been shutting that down for years. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and so the, 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 the Twitter employees, like I said, is the worst case scenario, which is why they're literally crying in their meetings. Uh, I mean, literally in tears. This is just so so good this I'm gonna, is the lady this is this is the woman who banned me from twitter <laughs> who's actually in tears so uh, this was uh, vijaya gad and uh, you may remember her from her appearance on the joe rogan podcast with tim pool and jack dorsey where she was reading out how i had called a bunch of nazis the k-word and that was why i was banned from twitter and joe rogan found that funny and tim pool's like it's not funny Come on, Tim. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but it's obviously as well. Just uh, oh no, not the dear Nazis. Yeah, like exactly. Them. Yeah, Twitter job. No, not the Nazis. <laughs> it's like, oh, sorry, can't insult them that way. But uh, anyway, she uh, Kean's. She is a key executive involved in decisions to remove former Donald Trump and me, the important person here, and ban political advertising. She expressed uncertainty about the future of the platform literally in tears. Monday was an emotional day at Twitter, even for executives. Shortly after the billionaire Elon Musk bought the powerful social media platform. And again, I love the fact they admit, okay, yeah, this was actually one of the seats of our power. You know, this was really important. And Elon Musk has just kicked in the door and there's nothing we can do about it. And now we're all going to go and cry in the corner about it, right? Vijay Gad called a virtual meeting with the policy and legal team she oversees to discuss the new ownership, what the new ownership can mean for them. Gad cried during the meeting as she expressed concerns about how the company could change. <laughs> why you, you love to see it why are you crying yeah what's with all the tears hmm. you're probably gonna get a pay rise but again it's another reveal it's yeah, a self-report that yeah uh i'm i know i deserve to be punished for what i've done yeah this is the, the mouth of sauron weeping as aragorn confronts him well i'm so sorry that you're upset of your reign of terror is coming to an end that the heroes have finally returned to undo all the evil you've spread across the land Oh, this is terrible for you. How awful. I mean, just honestly. And that's according to three people who were in the meeting. <laughs> they spoke to Polisco like, yeah, she cried. <laughs> she acknowledged that there would be there are significant uncertainties about what the company will look like under Musk's leadership. That's excellent news. Because if they weren't crying, they'd be like, well, it's business as usual. But no, they know it's all gonna change and they don't know what's gonna come next, which is wonderful. Uh, Gad has incidentally worked at Twitter since 2011, so she's definitely the person who banned me. And he's the key executive charged with overseeing Twitter's trust and safety legal and public policy functions. Uh, she, is she is seen internally as Twitter's, quote, moral authority. Damn. 
This is exactly the woman. Uh, and the executive tasked with handling sensitive issues like harassment and dangerous speech. Uh, Gad holds one of the most controversial positions at Twitter. She decides how the team moderates content. Uh, this has made her a target of right-wing criticism. But no left-wing criticism. Uh, and she uh, she was instrumental behind the decision to block the New York Post article about Joe Biden's son, Hunter Biden. Very interesting. I mean, the most guilty person there, then. Yes. She she is literally the person. Uh, and I imagine, honestly, right, I, I, I said this a while ago, I felt Jack Dorsey was kind of enthralled to the people beneath him. I think this is the person, which is why she was on the uh, thing, answering all the questions, while Jack Dorsey was just sat there like, whipped basically uh and hopefully under elon musk jack dorsey gets to come out and post ends on twitter like he used to you remember that tweet don't you he's a good boy yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway uh, so uh, they, they say it's unclear so far what musk's acquisition will mean for twitter and for gad's future with the company well i think that if elon musk is sensible she'll just get fired uh executives at an all hand meeting on monday demurred when employees asked what musk's leadership will mean for twitter's policies yeah they're screwed they're screwed. Uh, because we know like what Elon Musk's view on these sorts of things are. I don't think he'd be in favor of suppressing the news about Hunter Biden's laptop, which all turned out to be true, instead. If you can go to the next one, John, uh, as you can see, uh, someone here had posted, uh, Vijay Gad, the top censorship advocate at Twitter, who famously gaslit the world on Joe Rogan's podcast and censored the Hunter Biden laptop story, is very upset about the Elon Musk takeover. Yes, indeed. And uh, Elon Musk replies to this, saying, suspending the Twitter account of a major news organization for publishing a truthful story was obviously incredibly inappropriate. You love to see it. Love how this is going. The anti-disinformation political universe is completely shook by this. We get to the next one. Uh, there's a clip from MSNBC uh, with the uh, woman saying, well, look, this his takeover of, of Twitter has sent shockwaves through much of the anti-disinformation political universe. So yeah, the, I bet they're totally... The propaganda department yes. is upset because yes. a man has turned up and said, how about we have free speech? Yeah. I mean, that is all that is. I'd like to hear the other side of the story and they're just like, oh my God, everything's effed, you know? Like, they, literally, they will not have a monopoly over what counts as true or false anymore. And think about the, just the scale of the monopoly in the last two years that we've seen. Just, I mean, could you imagine saying that 10, 20 years ago? No. All human speech online would be controlled by this weird monopoly. No. And like, you know, if you post something, we'll have fact checkers who will only have a one-sided view of things, who will always, and you know, will actually actively just take things down or put a screen over it so people can't even read it and stuff like that. And that, that's all going to end, I suspect, under Elon Musk. You know, thank God. And they, and, and literally MSNBC, well, well, look, if Elon Musk does this to Twitter, then our business model is in trouble. So, okay, good. I don't care. Your business model relies upon you being a censorious monopoly that crushes all dissent. <laughs> yeah, maybe that was the wrong business to go into. Just saying. Anyway, so this has resulted in a lot of people seeing their accounts unsuspended, which I find interesting. This is just one of my favorites, uh, Jeremy from uh, Geeks and Gamers. Good, good channel, did nothing wrong. Uh, he got his uh, Twitter account unsuspended all of a sudden, which is nice. Uh, Ian Miles Chung got made like official, which is weird. Like if you scroll up to the previous one, right? The, the, he uh, had accounts restrictions lifted and like is now a professional Twitter account that he had applied for multiple times, but had never been given for some reason. It's like, that's weird because he absolutely is a professional, you know, influencer as they say. Uh, and so it's like, okay, why now? What's changed? You know, and this is very, very interesting. Now, there are still important people who are banned from Twitter, like Marjorie Taylor Greene, her personal account, and mine, obviously. I haven't actually appealed mine yet, we'll see. Um, but So it's not like uh, the job is done yet or anything like that, because ultimately, I want everyone restored. I want Tommy Robinson, Milo, Alex Jones. I want, I want the lot, everyone back. And I want to see what happens, because it's going to be chaos, absolute pandemonium. Well, no, for us, it will be basically nothing. Oh, for because, us, it would be glorious. No, for us, because it's. The, I saw a, a meme earlier of, uh, well, what if they bring Alex Jones back on and someone photoshopped it? So Alex Jones, mm. Joe Rogan. Yeah, 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 Vidya, I saw the clip, yeah. yeah. And uh, Alex Jones just starts saying some stuff and you have Elon just smoking there in this edit. It <laughs> be like... But that's the thing. It's just like, it's, yeah. it's not really... Nothing happens. No, for, yeah. for people who are used to a free speech zone, then uh, this is normal. This is fine. Yeah. Or and this was, this was what was fun about the internet before the progressives took over. Yeah. But, um, but anyway, so like I said, a lot of things have been changing. And obviously something has changed in the algorithm behind the scenes. Now, Twitter had previously locked this to make sure that no 
rabid employee could just like sabotage the site and crash it all. But if you look at this is Tucker Carlson's Twitter uh, account. If you can bring up that image, John, that's really weird, isn't it? That's not, really, really weird. Not really. You don't think so? No. Because uh, this you don't is think gaining 62,000 subscribers in a day is weird. No. When you get losing 50 normally. Because you can remember the circumstance before. Like, up until that day, Twitter is still a leftist hive mind that every conservative in the world is saying, don't be on, you know, you're just going to get banned. It's a waste of time. Screw that place Maybe. anyway. And then all of a sudden, we've all realized, okay, well, actually, the guy in charge is going to change things. So everyone is signaling, okay, we'll go back on and see what happens. Maybe, but I've seen a lot of people saying they're getting just a massive increase in engagement as well. As in, and people uh, like... More people on. But not just that though. Uh, I saw a tweet from Dean Kane, uh, where like saying, "Oh, you know, people have been saying to me, oh, I can see your tweets again.'" And then people who never left Twitter can suddenly still now see his what he's posting, because I don't doubt there was some kind of suppression algorithm. That... I I imagine so. I'm not I'm not saying this isn't the case. I mean, we have hmm. given examples such as when Jack Dorsey admitted that he censored hmm. uh, Republican candidates, yeah, partisanly as well. Yeah. But to say that uh, because there's a big boost all of a sudden, this must be just the work of the algorithm, I think majoritively this is just user changes. Well, maybe, but I suspect it's also something to do with algorithmic infer interference as well. Um, and what that takes on the aspect of is kind of like um, shredding papers before the new owner gets here. Like we've got to get rid of all this. Oh, you know, we'll just get rid of it all. You know, put it all back to how it was, you know, so he doesn't see it. Uh, that's honestly how this is coming across to me. I well, think this. That's how I imagine this happened with the, the verified or the social media thing with yeah, Miles exactly. Chung. Yeah. Because the way that works, because of the interview with um, mm -hmm. Ryan Hartwig, he just explained to me look, that's all handled by like moderation teams, which are kind of external, but they're given guidance from HQ about yeah. what to do and who to interact with and who not to. Yeah. So I think that that guidance is essentially being shredded yeah. because that was just all hyperpartisan, absolute nonsense that could be exposed. Obviously. And so that's definitely been destroyed. Yeah. But as for people joining all of a sudden, I, I'm not hugely Maybe. surprised by it. But I, I would be surprised if it was A, this much, and B, it's just this I, consistent. I mean, like, these guys are huge as well. Sure, but like, it's it's for everyone. Uh, like, I've been following a lot of people, like, smaller accounts, and they're all saying, well, you know, the guys in the office are saying, well, I've noticed a significant increase as well. Yeah, so you go and click on the accounts and they're all joining maybe, now. Maybe, and I'm not saying it's not that people aren't joining, but I'm also in of the mind that I think some some weighing of the scales has been done. Thumb on the scale behind the scenes, and that thumb has been lifted, I think. And uh, you notice there have been uh, more, if you go to the next one, um, you can see that uh, you know people like Ben Shapiro are gaining massively, and people like Cenk Uger are losing, which is very interesting. But again, it's consistent. It's, you know, Ben Shapiro's crowd have been told not to go on Twitter because it's crap, and it is. And then, well, yeah, okay, might be worth it. it Whereas might be. Uh, Chunky Boys are uh, thinking, no, I'm going to leave. Evil but man. I don't know. I don't think that the leftists are mass quitting Twitter, or at least not in the scale that they're talking. I mean, I suppose they're saying it, so maybe. Mm. But um, Going back to Tumblr and good riddance. Yeah, but the leftist losses are quite significant as well. We actually have uh, a list of a few, right? Rachel Maddow lost uh, 18,000. Anson Cooper lost 10,000. AOC lost 27,000. Kamala Harris lost 22,000. Hillary Clinton lost 17,000. I mean, it just makes it look like the game was rigged and that the rigging has been released. But maybe it's lots of people quitting, lots of people joining. Who knows? We do not know. Uh, anyway, let's uh, let's move on. We'll skip on the skip the next one, John, because we already covered it. Um, right. So let's talk about uh, the reaction to this from, uh, well, the people who are benefiting from the previous regime. Let's play the clip. And in fact, on Twitter, it is predominantly straight white men. So when Elon Musk says, wow, this is about free speech, it seems to me that it's about free speech of straight white men. And so let them have it. Let them just go at it. I enjoy the block button on Twitter. Um, I think it has a real outsized influence in, in, in our world because politicians and celebrities are on it. The cope. The complete capitulation as well. Not putting up any kind of, well, okay, fine, fine, just go and insult each other online then, if you have to, yeah, we, yeah, that's fine, that's what we want. Gotta have the race politics in there, though. Yeah. Majority no, no, of, of course. people are white men online, in politics. <laughs> They're everywhere. Therefore, this is all about white men. Yeah. Eh, of course. Oh. Yeah. And uh, you get the, the Jezebel take that I thought we'd end uh, on this. Elon's takeover will suck for women. <laughs> <laughs> The view, uh, the, 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 the view of the view and the view of Jezebel. Love it. Uh, 
fingers crossed, I guess. <laughs> you see Joy Reid's response to this. She was interviewing some you know, mental asylum patient, yep. and he was saying about the fact that, well, you know, they've tried to censor all the sexism and racism, and it's still there, even before, but now it's <laughs> going to go terrible again. It's <laughs> like, okay, e even with all your special fifis yeah. being taken care of, it's still there. Right. Yeah, then we... We could go through this, but there's, we don't have time. There's no point. So uh, good good news, though, for uh, people not using Twitter. Apparently, women are just joining Getter instead. Based? Yeah. Alyssa Milano, Deborah Messing, and other high-profile progressives have announced plans to leave Twitter and switch to Getter after Elon Musk pur purchase. Which is great. They can follow me on Getter, at Carl Benjamin, instantly. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> and come and join about dunking on the, <laughs> the women. <Yeah. laughs> come and join me for some good old-fashioned misogyny. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> feel free to use that blog button i guess I mean, you know um but uh, there's a final thing and i think this is a good thing to end on that i forgot to tell you that i'd added to the document uh so bo's latest article on lotus eaters uh, in which he's it's you know begins in sort of hyperbolic fashion where he's sort of like you know arise king elon the first uh because this is you know like elon has <laughs> that thumbnail <laughs> is great isn't it uh, is a really, really, really good read. Um, but the, the first point that he makes is really good, right? Elon Musk has done this topsy-turvy world of ours a profound and meaningful service by taking Twitter out of the hands of insane leftists who hate men, capitalism, and the West. I mean, if they've proved it, they've proved it, right? He's not wrong with that description at all. It's just a lot more things need to be added. Yeah, <laughs> it's, here all year. yeah it's just brief, right? <laughs> uh, by removing Twitter from the sickening grasp of subversive maggots like Parag Agrawal and Vijay Gad, King Elon has spared us from a continued deluge of hate and gaslighting. I mean, that's definitely true. <laughs> Go read the rest of Bo's article. It's so fantastic. But, uh, but he is, he's exactly right. This is an incredibly significant uh, turning point in the culture war. Because there are a lot of people who I, I've seen like in the, in the sort of right-wing circles who are like, is this significant? It's like, this is massively significant. And you can tell how significant this is by the, the level of screeching and outrage from the left. When they lose a significant fortress like Twitter, they know it. They feel the pain of it. And this is how you know you've done something really significant. This is how you know that Elon Caesar has stormed Alicia and things like this. This, is, this was a huge deal for them. And that's how the right can know this was a huge win for them. I'm 90% sure it's all going to be fine. But just before we began, I'm just, there's 10% of me that's a little bit worried. The, the pressure might get to him, all the smear pieces that Maybe. are going to come out calling him a white nationalist. Uh, like they haven't done all this anyway. I know, but it's just there's a worry to me that he may end up uh, buckling. Or he might start a purge. And uh, the, there is a worry, though, whenever you take over, that you might purge too many people. I know it's going to sound silly at first. No, but no, no. if you purge too many, then you may not actually have the staff to run the place yeah. because it's such a, a big you know, dragon. Yeah. But if you purge too few, that's always fixable. Yeah. It's very easily fixable. Yeah, you <laughs> so, can always purge more, yeah. yeah so but, I mean, I, if he moves it to Miami, then, you know. Yeah, I have got some worries about the thing. I saw uh, Jason Miller from Ghetto was saying he's a bit over his head as well because I don't know if he has the well, experience he is. But, but But who knows? I guess we'll mm. see. But I, I know that there is a, definitely a lot of purging that does need to be done. If you appreciated that segment from the podcast of the Lotus Eaters, you can go to lotuseaters.com to get access to all the premium content we have on the site, such as this premium video, The Politics of the Northern Lights, The Golden Compass, from John Wheatley. And if you want to find out what else John Wheatley is putting out, you can follow him on Getter at at John Wheatley on Getter. Thank you and goodbye.